Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Metabolism and Menopause podcast. My name is Stephanie, and I am your host and CEO of Vitality OET. We are a women's nutrition, health, and fitness company that focuses predominantly on women's hormones, particularly as they start going through perimenopause and onwards. We know that so many women struggle during this time in their life with symptoms like irritability and brain fog. They're struggling with hot flashes and night sweats and also weight gain around the middle of your belly that seems to have come out of absolutely nowhere. You've changed nothing in your life and you're doing everything the same and now you're cutting your calories, your carbs, doing exercise, all the things that you used to do to lose weight, but now it seems like nothing is working. You're putting in a ton of effort and not getting anything out of it and that just leaves you feeling super frustrated and leaving you not knowing what to do. But we know now that your body is inherently different than what it was like prior to these hormonal changes. So our mission is to teach women about how their bodies change during this period in their life. Um, so that way you can reach those health and fitness goals, feel in control and at home in your body again, live a life full of vitality, and really understand how to take care of this new body of yours because it is different. So today the topic I want to talk about is a little bit different than usual. I wanted to talk about perfection because we see this in clients time and time again where you want to do everything perfectly and then when you don't, you're really hard on yourself and it actually really limits your ability to reach your goals. So what I want you to think about is what think about the last time you tried to do something different. Like maybe it was changing your diet and the way you're eating. Maybe it's exercise. Maybe it's lifestyle things. You could apply it to anything. And then suddenly you're like, oh my gosh, I just, I've got to get this perfect. And you start planning and planning and planning and planning and just trying to really perfect things. And then the thought of all the things that you need to do to get started and to plan and start everything perfectly just ends up being incredibly overwhelming. And then it ends up making you not start at all, or you quit part way through. I'm sure all of you can think of a time in your life, or maybe you're going through that right now. Perfectionism is what we think of as being our best selves but it's actually the opposite of perfection is actually striving for excellence and success. So how does that really work? There's definitely a difference. Perfectionism is actually a defense mechanism for us to avoid or minimize failure, judgment, blame, shame, all of these negative emotions that we might feel. It's actually kind of how we protect ourselves. It's not how we strive to be successful like we might think. So next time you think about having to be perfect to get something done, ask yourself first, what am I actually afraid of here? Um, so an Aristotle quote here is, if you don't want to be criticized, then say nothing, do nothing, be nothing. And I don't think you want to be nothing. We want you to be you and reach that goal. So what perfectionism actually does is it creates fear and paralysis and actually prevents you from making change. So think of all the things that you've always wanted to do and the, the excuses that you come up with because you can't do it perfectly. That's not good. It prevents us from actually getting to the place where we want to be. So our main advice for you here is to stop thinking more and start doing more. What I always say is act first, perfect later, because otherwise it's never going to happen. When we are stuck in this perfectionism stage, we try to learn as much as we can about what we want to do, and we try to get all these nitty-gritty details figured out because it's important that we don't mess it up, right? Like, that's what you're thinking about when you're doing all this stuff. And this will keep some of us stuck in the learning phase and prevent us from putting anything into actual practice. So, like, you research, you research, you research, but you never do anything with it. So what's the point in having all this knowledge if you're not going to do anything with it? It's almost like getting a neurosurgeon who has studied every single book, cover to cover, but hasn't actually done any surgeries before. You probably wouldn't have very much confidence in that surgeon and their ability to perform and be successful because they've never taken the opportunity to put that learning into practice. That's where so many of us lie, is that we're always planning, 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 learning, 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 but we never do anything. The way you perfect things is by acting it out and practicing. Think about trying to perfect a skill like shooting a basketball. You could read all the things you want, study all the drills, but if you never do the thing, you're never gonna get the ball into the basket. You're never gonna increase your performance, increase your accuracy, um, your consistency, what the rate is that you actually get the ball into the net. 
over time. That percentage is going to increase with practice. And it's the same with everything else. And perfection actually holds us back from doing this. So the difference between learning and practice is action. A lot of us, again, are just stuck in learning and learning and learning and trying to find all that information and try and figure out how to change our lifestyle, how to change our diet, what exercise is right. Yet then we get so overwhelmed with all this information because let's face it, there's so much out there that then we just get overwhelmed and we do nothing. So practice is going to involve applying the knowledge that you've acquired over and over and over. Active practice is so valuable because the mistakes that you make while you practice are going to reveal super important insights and more learning as you go. That's how we grow. The brain learns best through mistakes and failures. And just because you fail does not mean you are a failure. It just means that what you did didn't work. So now we either have to practice more, try a different strategy, get more support, get some guidance, maybe get a little bit more education, whatever that is, but don't just stop. That doesn't make you a failure. It just means you're not there yet. You haven't achieved like autonomy in that skill and that's okay. So remember, practice focuses your energy on the process, not the outcome and your fear of getting that outcome perfect. So this is something Taylor and I talked about on a podcast quite a ways back where you're so focused on getting to that end goal, you miss everything in between. And then every day that you just focus on that end goal, you're disappointed because you're not there yet, or you didn't do it perfectly. I was literally on a call yesterday with a client who was so upset because she was like, you know, like today I could have had more water. And I was like, okay, but you actually got more water in than what you used to. She's like, yeah, but I could have done better. She was so focused on being perfect that she negated the progress that she's been making and all the other wins that she's been doing along the way. I asked her, what other things have you been doing that you've been successful at? She's been eating more fruits and veggies. She's been trying to focus on her sleep. She's been working on her breakfast. So there's other wins, but she's so focused on the things that she isn't doing perfectly that it's making her feel like a failure and like she isn't making progress. So focusing on the process and like really dialing in on these certain habits and trying to work at it and practice is going to make you enjoy everything more, more likely to stick to it and also get you to that goal at the end. And you're going to be in such a better mindset. So shifting your focus away from perfectionism and learning and more towards messy action and practice, the better. It's going to seem daunting. We don't like to fail, but failure is all a part of learning. As coaches, we would be so disappointed to see that you've never experienced failure or setbacks in a coaching program or while you're going through a learning process. That is what coaches are here for. That is what life is all about. You just need to find the right people and the support to help you through it so that we can make sure that you're moving forward and figuring out tangible solutions. So let's say you come up with a setback or a failure or an obstacle. Then we can look back and figure out, okay, is there a way to avoid that from happening again? How can we better prepare if we can't and we know it's going to occur again? How can we help you afterwards? What do the next steps look like? How can we prepare if this event is happening again? Whatever that looks like. But that's how we're going to improve you from getting to where you need to be as opposed to focusing on the negative, focusing on perfection, and then just giving up because perfection will ultimately lead to that. And the more you get comfortable failing, the better. And I think sport is something that helped me a lot with this because you're never going to be the best. Um, It's very rare. So you learn with certain setbacks how to adjust and change and things like that. And that's happened to me in school. That's happened to me in business. It's happened to me in relationships, with my health, with my fitness. Um, There's been so many things where you learn and you fail, but you learn from them. If you're not learning from those mistakes, that's where things go wrong. So remember, messy action is always better than no action at all, because at least you're doing something and moving the needle a little bit and getting something out of it. So the next thing I kind of want to talk about here is 
learning to develop more self-acceptance. I know a lot of us are coming into trying to change these lifestyle changes, or maybe you're starting coaching and we want to lose weight and we want to feel differently. And quite frankly, a lot of us are unhappy with where we are physically, and maybe we're not happy with the way our relationships are. We're not happy being in pictures. We try to avoid them at all costs. Maybe we're avoiding social events because we're embarrassed and feel ashamed and guilty, or we're nervous we're going to be around certain food or certain friends and make poor choices. Um, maybe we're not having enough energy to do the things that we want to do. We can't be present. We can't go for a few walks and stuff, and then we feel completely depleted. You feel out of control around food. You're not sleeping well. You're snappy with your family. You're not in a good place. And that's okay because we've all been there. So then you're looking at like these big goals that you have, and typically they're going to be physical, and there's nothing wrong with wanting to have a physical change, but that doesn't mean that you can't love yourself right now and still want to change. And I know a lot of us are going into this wanting to lose weight and feel different and all those things. And that's okay. But you think that once you lose the weight or once I reach this goal, I'll finally feel good. I'll finally be confident. I'll finally love myself more when this happens. But unfortunately, science actually says otherwise, which is crazy. Research has shown that self-acceptance, confidence, and self-love actually doesn't improve when we hit our initial goals. Um, especially physical goals with like weight loss. In fact, some people's inner self-criticism actually becomes worse. People who have low levels of self-compassion and acceptance are significantly more likely to self-sabotage themselves and gain weight or physical symptoms back when times get tough or motivation wanes. So I really want to highlight this. People who have low levels of self-compassion and acceptance are far more likely to self-sabotage and gain weight or physical symptoms back when things get challenging or you lose motivation. How much does that resonate with like so many of you? This is huge. We always talk about self-sabotage and like, oh, I was doing so good. And then I just, I binged. I couldn't, I just couldn't help myself. And yeah, maybe you weren't eating enough. Maybe you're too restrictive, but a lot of it comes down to, do you think you're worth it? Do you love yourself? Are you happy with yourself when you're alone? There's a lot of self-work that needs to happen with this kind of stuff. And this is the stuff that really helps push people to being successful. When we work on mindset and really understanding these things and getting to the nitty gritty as to like what we're actually really struggling with and what we're actually needing and what we're actually wanting, what needs aren't being met. Oh my goodness, everything changes. And it is absolutely incredible when you hit that point. It is, it's amazing to see people flourish. It is one of the most rewarding things that we get to experience. Um, and then you're less likely to self-sabotage. You're more likely to stay the course. You're enjoying the process. You're learning. You're enjoying learning. You're having these aha moments. You're having better relationships, communicating with your kids and your spouse better. You're able to handle stress better. Things can just kind of, you're a little bit more chill and go with the flow. And it's incredible to watch. When we aren't accepting of our bodies, it can lead to more negative thought patterns and changes, and that'll change our behavior. So like ruining our relationship with food, creating self-sabotage, binging, all those kinds of things. And it has been shown to significantly contribute to our stress response, which if you've been listening for any amount of time, you know that our stress response in cortisol has so much influence on our ability to be successful and how it influences our gut health, our mental health, our hormones, inflammation, hunger cues, like even our hair, everything is influenced by cortisol, our blood sugar control. And we want to make sure that we are mitigating that stress response as much as we can. So you thought your crappy day at work was the only thing making you stressed out? wrong. Think again. It's also your self-critic. And there's nothing wrong with wanting to like have high standards for yourself, to wanting to achieve these goals, to want to have structure, but you have to give yourself some grace. And this is so, so, so important. Every day is not going to be perfect. You are not perfect. You will never be perfect. And if you're so focused on being perfect, life is going to pass you by. So if you don't start with loving and accepting yourself now, as you are, and appreciating your body, 
even if it's not working or looking the ideal way way that you want it to, then you aren't going to have any self-compassion no matter what size you become in the future, long-term, nothing. Sustainability of that size or feeling will be so much harder to maintain when you get to that goal if you're not genuinely happy with yourself and your life. So there's lots of things that we need to work on. Self-sabotage and long-term failure, reverting back to those old habits that we had before, is highly correlated with low self-compassion and acceptance. So you're more likely to revert back and self-sabotage and go back to what you're doing before if you have low self-compassion and acceptance. So we need to get to the bottom as to what this is, and you need to know that you're worth it. You are so worth it. So what does that really mean? It means that if you don't accept and appreciate yourself now as you are, you probably will never reach the levels of success success that you could if you changed your mindset. There are two ways that we can do this. There's self-positivity and self-neutrality because let's face it, we're not going to love every aspect of ourself. There's all this like, like, what is it like the toxic positivity or whatever you want to call it? It's important to note your struggles. It's important to have them validated. It's important to talk about them. It's important to know that life is freaking hard sometimes and you're not going to love yourself every day, but there are ways that we can kind of change our mindset and you don't have to love the way you look now, but you can still love yourself. And this is so important. So again, we're not, we don't have to pretend to love ourselves, every aspect of ourselves, but it is important for you to take the time to find things that you do appreciate about your body and your health and remember them. We don't need that toxic positivity because let's be real, you just be lying to yourself anyways, and that's just as unproductive as self-criticism. So by finding ways to appreciate the things that you do love about yourself and being neutral about the things that you might not be as like you might not be as excited about for yourself is an important step to being successful, changing your mindset and actually reaching those goals. So let's talk about self-positivity. What that means is having a positive view of yourself, regardless of your body's shape or size or your current habits, or your current behaviors. So an example of self-positivity would be picking out things that you like about yourself, or how an outfit looks on you, or pointing out to yourself the things that you do appreciate and love about yourself. I love how my hair looks today. I really like the way my outfit looks. I like this shirt because it makes my arms look good. Um, I always care for others. Like There are so many things that you can tell yourself that you love about yourself. I love my eyelashes. I'm Latin. It's We have long eyelashes. It's great. People always ask me if I'm wearing fake, fake eyelashes, and I love that about myself. Do I love my nose? No. That is something I also inherited from the Latin side of my family. We all have big noses. But that's okay. I don't mind it because I love my eyelashes, and I love my eyes, and I feel like that's more important than like fixating on my nose because if I fixated on my nose, I'd be miserable. So fixating on my eyes. The next one is self-neutrality. It's the difference It's different from self-positivity in that it doesn't always involve loving the things about yourself. And quite frankly, it's usually things that we want to change. But it's more about being accepting of it, not inviting negative thoughts or emotions into the picture around it. So this usually is a focus on your body or your abilities and what it provides you and others uh, and other non-critical characteristics you can be fine with for now even if you do want to see them change in the future. There is nothing wrong with that. For example, you could remind yourself that my body allows me to get up in the mornings and take care of my kids, or I have birthed and raised wonderful children with this body. Um, It's a great way to be neutral without being critical. So it's not super specific. It's not needing to force yourself to love yourself, certain things that you like, stuff like that. Um, it's It's not terrible. Like So for me, I do not like my feet. I have little bunions. They're not great. I don't like it because I can't wear certain shoes. They make my feet hurt. Um, I have to buy like wide-toed shoes for like the gym, stuff like that. Um, But you know what? My feet allow me to be mobile. Like my grandpa was in a wheelchair pretty early in life um, and he used to be so active. So I am very grateful that I still have my feet to walk on. That's amazing. Um, I also like the shape of my toenails. Some people have very small toenails. I have bigger toenails. I love being able to have them painted. That's awesome. Um, So do I like the way my feet look? No, absolutely not. But that's okay. Like, I don't have to love them. It's just, it's neutral. It's there. I can't change it. And it's fine. 
So positivity and neutrality has been positively associated with greater habit development, um, greater habit development and long-term success in women. So this is because it allows us to make mistakes, to learn from those mistakes and grow through new experiences and struggles without giving up as easily. And this is all tied back to the growth mindset that I've talked about a billion times. You can go back and listen to that as well. Um, so, 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 so important. So we did that episode with Coach Amy. It was incredible. So go back and listen to that one. So try an exercise where you can break down different categories of yourself and decide if you want to be positive or neutral about it. Um, you can't be critical or negative, though. Like, it's just positive or neutral, and that's okay. So it's a really great first step in being conscious of negative self-talk and self-criticism. So here's a few categories that you can do. I highly recommend you guys like write this down and do it. It's super helpful. Um, it can be a bit emotional, so make sure you give yourself time and space. But here are the different characteristics or categories that I think would be great for you. So first is physical characteristics, how your body looks. The second is physical accessory characteristics. So this is things that we can additionally control, like our hair, our nails, clean teeth, um, like certain clothing makes us look good, things like that. Uh, then you have your personality characteristics. You have your mindset characteristics, your self-view, your habits. Those are really great categories to start in. So for example, a physical characteristic of body positivity would be, I love how shaped my calves and ankles are. I love um, my butt. I do. I love my butt. I really do. I think it's great. So body positivity right there. Body neutrality. Like I said, the feet thing for me, do not like my feet. Um, nobody wants feet pics from me. I couldn't even go into that for extra money if I wanted to. Um, so another example would be my, my body is giving me two wonderful children. Um, my arms allow me to carry my baby around. Um, there's so many things that you could do where it's more, it helps you provide an action or complete something as opposed to the way that it looks. Um, physical accessories. I love my hair when I curl it. I really do. My hair is crazy. It's wavy. Um, but it holds curl incredibly well. If I straighten it, it also holds like whatever I do with my hair, it tends to hold really well. And I am so lucky for that. Um, but it doesn't grow very long, which again is frustrating, but that's okay. I love that I can style it and it stays the way that I want. That makes me happy. Um, for body neutrality, it could be maybe you have crooked teeth and you're like, you know what? But brushing my teeth every day makes me feel good, makes me feel clean. I like the way that it feels. I feel accomplished. Awesome. Um, personality characteristics, for example. So for this one, for positivity, I could be like, I love that I am patient when talking with Taylor and family and friends. And like, I love that I have the ability to really listen to what people are saying um, and listen to understand as opposed to listen to answer and s create a solution right away. Like genuinely good at building connection. I love that about myself. Um, something that's more neutral is my type A personality. It's not as bad as it used to be, but oh boy, was that an issue before um, where it would like stress me out if things weren't exactly the way that they were a little bit OCD. But you know what? That personality characteristic really helped me be on time and early for all of my career, for my job, for school. It helped me be really organized and study well. Um, it helped create structure. I never handed things late on time. Could it be a little bit neurotic before? Absolutely. But you know what? Ultimately, that did actually help me be successful, um, even though it was something that I didn't totally love about myself. But that's OK. Like it did have a benefit. So being able to frame things that way is super important. Mindset. I love so this is positivity that I can make mistakes and use that as a learning opportunity and not feel defeated. It kind of empowers me. So I always talk about like when I used to go to conferences and stuff and I still get this, like you get into rooms with like the smartest people and like people that you look up to and like you feel less than because you're like, they have accomplished so much and I am not there yet. Or I'm having a conversation. And I feel really intimidated and being able to take a step back and be like, why do I feel this way? Why do I feel jealous? Why do I feel insecure? Why do I feel intimidated? What is actually causing these feelings? And it's like, okay, I either don't have enough education yet, don't have the experience yet. I haven't networked enough yet. Um, I haven't experienced those things personally yet. Um, 
I haven't spent as much time in the field. I haven't developed X, Y, Z yet. Um, they've been further on in their journey than I have. So comparing like weight loss journeys, for example, is very common. It's like, oh man, like she lost weight so easily. And it's like, yeah, but you didn't, you don't know that she's reverse dieted forever. So how can I make sure the next time I'm in this situation that I don't feel this way? So maybe it's going, getting a mentor. Maybe it's getting a coach. Maybe it's doing some extra education. Maybe it's actually just putting in more time and more effort. Maybe it's just, um, surrounding yourself with different people. There's so many things. So I really love that I can take those opportunities and take a step back from those experiences and help me figure out what I need to do so that I don't experience those negative emotions again in the future. Um, for neutrality, it can be like, oh, my past experiences have taught me what not to do um, and move forward in a different direction. So maybe you've made some choices that you were not proud of. Um, I know I have. I've made some mistakes. I've done things that I probably shouldn't have done. I've said things that I probably shouldn't have done. I've spent money in ways that I shouldn't have spent money. But you know what? It helped me get to where I am. It helped build who I am. The experiences help you get to where you are today. And that's okay. Like, we don't have to be proud of everything that we've done. And that's fine. Um, Self-view. This one can be tough. So I love myself now. And that will allow me to be more successful in the future as I continue this. So am I where I want to be in all aspects of my life? No. And that's okay. Hormones are part of that. I'm not happy with where my hormones are, are at right now. Um, but that's okay. I'm working at it. And in the future, I'm going to be able to be better. Um, neutrality is like who I am now is not someone to criticize. So you might not be happy with the person you are right now. Make, maybe you feel like you're making mistakes over and over and over, or you're making the same mistakes over and over and over. You keep going back to the wrong people. You keep surrounding yourself with the wrong people, people who might bring you down or don't support you, or you're upset with the way that you're eating or your lifestyle or the way you spent money, whatever it is. And you don't have to love the choices that you're making right now or the mistakes that you're making. And that's fine. But you can say, I'm still getting up every day with the desire to be better. And that's okay. You can not be proud of who you are right now, but you can still love yourself and know that you are working at becoming the best version of yourself. And it's going to take time. It's not going to happen overnight. And that's okay. Habits. Oh, habits are a good one. So um, for me, I like that I drink water um, in the mornings and that I have my water bottles and cups and all that stuff all over so that I'm making sure that I am staying hydrated. I am proud of myself for doing that. That's great. Um, not so great habit. I can be an emotional eater. Um, if I don't plan, food is terrible. Oh my gosh, you guys, the week leading up to the wedding and the few days after, um, I didn't cook anything. We were eating like fast food stuff, eating out. Of course, friends and family are around. We were traveling, not making great food choices. I had carrot cake from our wedding um, five days in a row after breakfast. So did I love those things? No, but I didn't prepare enough. I didn't have enough meal planning done. I didn't create the time and space to cook, and that's okay. Um, I'm going to explore. Like, you can use that as, like, an example. Like, I'm going to explore what I can do to set myself back on track. That's okay. You don't have to love what you were doing or that you were in that rut. That's fine. Or emotional eating. You can be upset that you do that, and that's okay. Emotional eating is a trigger from a stress response, and I'm going to keep continuing to work to figure out what are those triggers. Is it a person, a place, a thing? Is it people that I surround myself with often? Is it like always happening when I'm watching TV? Like working to figure out what those things are so I can break the cycle um, and figure out what other emotional outlets I can use to help myself move forward. So you don't have to be super like body positive all the time. You can have neutrality about yourself. Just don't be negative. Like you are worth it and you are more than your your failures. You are more than your mistakes. Uh, you are more than your experiences. You are more than what people think of you negatively. Um, if I would have let all the things people told me growing up, including my father, um, like it's, I would amount, I would have done nothing. I would have done nothing. But like, despite those things, sometimes the things they would tell me I would think were true. I know now that's not true. But like, if I would have let those things really sit and fester and not been like, I'm going to change, I'm going to make a better life for myself. I don't like where I am right now, but I'm going to work hard to not be there later. 
That's that made all the difference for me. Um, for I'm just gonna tell you a village story time. I'm going totally off topic here, off script. Um, I tend to do this a lot, but uh, I'm gonna tell you guys a little bit about my upbringing. So, um, my dad was not the best person. Um, he used to say things like, "I'd wear my yoga pants to school um, and like a baggy hoodie," and he would call me a slut for wearing tight pants, and that no one would respect me. Um, he used to tell me that my boyfriend at the time would leave me because I wasn't good enough, which did end up happening in the end, but that's okay. That's, that doesn't matter. Um, he used to tell me that all like education was a waste of money and I have spent so much money on education. I have 13 different certifications. I have two degrees. I have two diplomas. Like I have spent a lot of money on education. I would say it's served me pretty well. It has taught me a lot of lessons. It has brought me to meet so many amazing people. It has brought me connection and helped me with my self-value, my self-worth. They all taught me great different things in terms of like time management and effort and all these things that I wouldn't have experienced otherwise. Um, So if I would have let all of those things continue on or believed all the things that he was saying about me to be true, I would not be where I am today. Um, there's so many things that happened growing up. Like we lived on a farm, um, that was a disaster. We literally had like a hose as a shower head, um, in our shower. I used to work to help my mom pay bills because my dad peaced out and was not paying bills. Um, food choices were not great. My mom worked so incredibly hard. She would wake up at like four in the morning, go work in a pig barn in a job that she did not love, but she made the best out of it. Um, I was going to school. I was coaching other sports teams for the junior teams. I was working a ton, plus my own sports, plus my homework and academics. But my whole purpose was growing up. I was not going to repeat that cycle. I was very set on these are my circumstances now. I am going to do things to make sure that it doesn't happen so I can help my mom get out of this so my sister doesn't have to experience this um, in the future. Like, I want to be that change. So we had mold growing on our windowsills. Like, we had mice in our house all of the time. And I mean all of the time. Like, we'd be in bed and they'd be running up the curtains. You could hear them rustling in the closets. Um, And, like, my dad was also abusive. Like... And I always told myself, like, I was going to do everything I could to make sure that this wouldn't happen to me so I could help my mom get out of this stuff um, so my sister wouldn't have to experience this stuff. But my goal was to not let that be the situation ever again. Um, And it was really hard. But, like, if you keep believing the narrative and, like, not changing your self-talk and accepting yourself for who you are. Like, oh man, I got bullied in high school too. Like it was the worst, but I didn't let those things dictate who I am because I knew who I was and I was not those things. And it was hard to believe at that time because when you're in high school, what people think of you matter so, so much. And being able to fail time and time again and like not getting certain things or not getting certain jobs or You know, all those things just push you to be like, okay, that wasn't meant to be, or I just need a little bit more, uh, more education, or I need a little bit more this, a little bit more that. And it helps you going towards that goal, but you have to think about the process. Okay. What are the steps that I need to get myself to that? And yes, that's a little bit different than health and fitness, but it's the exact same thing. What are the small steps that I need to do to get to me to where I want to be? Stop focusing on that end goal. Stop focusing on being perfect. And just take those steps and changes and change that self-talk to help you because sometimes you aren't going to have someone in your corner. And it really freaking sucks, especially if it's family. So know that you do have people on your side. Like you can always message me. I will always pump your tires. I will always be the cheerleader. But aiming for this like idea of perfection just like leads you to like feeling so crappy about yourself. And like, I was so there. I wanted to be perfect. I wanted to have the perfect grades. I thought I was going to marry my high school sweetheart. I thought that I was going to become a teacher. I was going to do this. I was going to do that and focus so much on being perfect that it made me miserable. And once I finally started focusing on the process and the little steps and enjoying those things and discovering what I actually love and who I actually am and what I actually want in life, 
and accepting myself for who I am, everything changed. So there's lots of things that you saw. That was super off tangent, you guys, but just got to go with it sometimes. But there are so many things that you can do to help with dealing with perfectionism, especially around your body. And you can have affirmations and they don't all have to be positive. They can be neutral. Um, So it can be things like, I love my body exactly for how it is. I love this about my body. I love that about my body. You can be like, thank you, body, for taking care of me. Thank you for allowing me to be independent. Thank you for allowing me to have the energy to play with my kids, whatever it may be. So affirmations like that can be helpful. I know it sounds super stupid and it seems like it's not going to work, but saying words out loud is like one of the most empowering things I've personally ever experienced. Um, I accomplished a lot in my life and I can like, I can say that I've done a lot in a small amount of time. Um, but like, I didn't tell myself I was proud of myself till I was in my late twenties. That's messed up because there was so much to be proud of before then. But I distinctly remember the day, and I'm pretty sure I mentioned this on my podcast with Amy. I distinctly remember the day I opened my clinic. I was sitting on the floor, everybody left and it was the day before opening. And I just sat on the floor, looked at everything around me. And I just started crying. And I said, I am so proud of myself. Because this was like a big monumental thing I never thought I would ever accomplish way beyond my dreams. I didn't know if it was something I even wanted way back in the day. Like I was so proud of myself for accomplishing that and saying those words out loud. To me that day, everything in my life changed. It was like I knew that I had the power to change my circumstances no matter what I thought about where I came from, the relationships that I had the struggles that we had growing up and how everything like really amounted to that moment. And from that moment, I knew anything was possible. And I want people to experience that too. And you can do that in your health and fitness journey. You can. So like saying things out loud is so empowering and I very much encourage you to do it. Um, just, just honest, just do it. I just, just do it. <laughs> That's the best the best to have for you. Um, body talk. Very, very challenging. So really challenge and avoid a negative body talk of yourself and others. This is very important. Um, Or reduce and stop body talk altogether. Um, After all, one person's appearance isn't the most important thing. And I talk about this lots. Um, Like I always, I've never been like severely overweight by any means, but I've been through phases where like I've been light, but the biggest pant size I've ever been or been very uncomfortable in my body. I was always very self-conscious of not having a chest. Um, there was a girl in school who used to call me mosquito bites because I have tiny boobs and they didn't come in and I'm, I'm still waiting for them. <laughs> so um, that was really tough. And I think we all just focus on the way people look and we comment on those things. And I remember being um, at a party at a friend's house, a barbecue, and I had noticed one of our friends had lost quite a bit of weight, but I'm very careful when commenting on people's weights. So I like made sure we were like aside and by ourselves. Some people do not like having the attention. And I just, I was like, Hey, like, are you doing okay? I noticed like you, you look really great. You've lost some weight, but I didn't want to like mention it in front of everyone in case you were uncomfortable. And the reason I always do this is because one of my best friends, she, um, went through some incredible grief with the loss of a friend. Um, he had committed suicide and she found him and she lost so much weight after and not in a good way. It was like, she didn't eat for days. Um, she really struggled. It was one of the hardest things I've been through. Um, and it brought us together like very closely together, but it was really hard because we'd be at the gym together. She used to work with me at the time at a gym in the city and people would be like, Oh wow, you look so great. What are you doing? And then she'd be triggered and crying and um, like hysterical because it was grief from not eating. Like that's, that's what it was. We called it the grief diet. Like it was, it was awful and she was not healthy and she did not feel good and she was not sleeping. It was a really, really hard time. So I am always incredibly cautious of commenting on people's bodies as I've had negative experiences as well. So comment things on like, oh man, like you're getting so strong in the gym. That is awesome. 
or, oh man, like you're able to do this or able to do that, or your, your shirt looks really good, or you look great in those jeans. Those kinds of things are so much better than actually commenting on a person's weight and their body specifically, because you never know what they're doing. And if it is good, they'll tell you, they'll be like, oh, thanks. Like they're new. I've lost some weight. So I've been able to buy new jeans. Great. Then you can talk about that stuff, but you have to tread so lightly because you never know what it is. It could be illness. It could be grief. It could be a multitude of things. So I always encourage people to be very cautious when they're doing like talking about people's bodies or themselves as well. Um, social media is another thing that I really want to touch on that can like really trigger us to try and be perfect and negatively affect our mindset and just make us focus on that end goal instead of the process. So follow people who are also body positive, who focus on health, who focus on fitness that make you feel good, or you feel like you're learning and are educated and don't make you feel like garbage. Um, you don't want to be focusing people who, who, are like glorifying certain things or are so caught up on want a six pack, want this, want that. Cause if that's going to be triggering for you and makes you feel worse, that's not good. Or just don't follow people who talk about bodies at all. And that's okay. And then self view, just love all parts of yourself. Um, practice some mindfulness awareness, focus on what you like that is not necessarily related to your body as well. Like your personality, Find ways to actually love who you are. It doesn't always have to be physical because let's face it, we all have things we'd like to change about ourselves. We all have this idea of what it was like when we were smaller or a certain size or a certain level of fitness. We think back to that and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, But think back to those times and what were you doing? What did you enjoy during those times? Because if you get back to those things, I promise you, it'll be a lot easier to get to where you want to be. Because a happy person is less stressed out and your body will adapt so much better. So again, remember you are more than just a body. You are capable, you are strong, and you need to remember that we are complex and dimensional people. And you are the only person on this earth who can offer what you have to offer and contribute. Remember that there are people who love you and rely on you and are so thankful to know you. So make sure that you love yourself as well. Remember that we are always changing, especially as we start going through perimenopause and menopause and there's these hormonal changes. So there is a learning curve. We need to adjust and adapt appropriately and it's going to take time. So give yourself some grace, do a little bit of research and then start acting on it. Don't focus on the perfect plan and acting that out. Even us as coaches, when we're working with clients, we have a rough outline and like we have steps that we like to follow and there's protocols but we know that life is going to happen and that plan will change. It's never actually going to be week by week, perfect, perfect the way we plan because life happens and that's okay. It's never going to be perfect. If life was perfect, it'd be pretty flipping boring. Let's be honest. So again, some days we are not going to be super positive. Some days are not going to feel amazing. Some days accepting yourself is going to be really freaking hard. But that's why it's important to be able to use these like body positivity and enjoying the process and focusing on your bare minimums, the things that you can control and being able to be neutral on those days that are tougher so that we can keep moving forward and really work on our self-criticism and our negativity so we don't get pulled backwards. So that's what's going to happen if we're just focused on being perfect and that we have to love everything about ourselves. That's not true. You're not going to be perfect. So I hope you guys found this helpful. I know I got a little bit ranty, but I always like sharing little anecdotes. Um, I'm very passionate about the psychology side of things. It's honestly what brings me joy more than anything else. So I hope you found this helpful. If you have friends that are struggling with perfectionism or keep reverting back to old ways, share this with them. I would love to be able to reach more people and help more people with this kind of messaging As always, if you are struggling during perimenopause and menopause or you're dealing with hormonal symptoms and you don't know what's going on, just send me a message. We do assessments for free all of the time. We help you figure out what strategies you should be doing, why what you're doing isn't working anymore, help you figure out those calories, the protein, where you should be. Um, We just want to help as many women as we can, and we will give you all the resources that we can. And then if you need extra help, you just let us know, but we are here to help you every step of the way. Have a great day, you guys, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.